God knows exactly what you need. You don't know what you need. You might think you need a high paying job. God may think you need a job at Circle K on the graveyard shift. I know that because he gave me one. That's not what I wanted. I've been working in construction, making good money. And then the recession of 82 hit and I'm out of a job and no construction is going on and unemployment benefits run out. And I've got one child and one on the way. And I go to work at Circle K, which is the local, for those of you who aren't from the West Coast or have never been out there, it's the 7-Eleven. It's a convenience store. And I work the graveyard shift because I could make 25 cents an hour more on the graveyard shift than I could on the day shift, which meant I was making 25 cents above minimum wage. It's the only job of all the jobs I've had in my life where I had to take a lie detector test before I could get hired. To be a clerk at Circle K, I never quite understood that. But God knew that's what I needed. That's not what I thought I needed. I thought I needed a real job. I don't know. Sorry for any of you who might be working as a clerk in a convenience store right now and think it's a wonderful job. I thought it wasn't a real job. I'm thinking, I can't, I can't last in this. I can't support my family in this. And then got another job, making a little bit more, working for a Christian company. Awesome. This is great. After five months, they went out of business. And I was unemployed again. I'm going, what's going on? You know, years later, I went back and looked at my, uh, my income tax return for that year. I was living in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And in Albuquerque, at that time, if you made below a certain uh, wage... You got money back from the government even if you hadn't put any in. I mean, I got, we got back a, a return the next year that we hadn't put that much money in, but we were so poor, we got that much money back. But you know what I realized in looking back upon that is we never begged. We were never late on our rent payment, on a car payment. We were never without food. We never sensed that we were in want. We knew that God was providing. And at the time, God was blessing us with uh, some incredible ministry opportunities, ministry and music all throughout New Mexico and opening doors that were just amazing, getting into prisons, getting into churches that I still don't know how in the world we ever got invited to that church. But here we are in these large churches and, and we're ministering unto the Lord. And he provided and provided and provided all the way. So... I looked back at that and I looked at the amount of money that I actually made that year and went, how could a family of four live on that? That's impossible. No, it's not because God provided and he knew what we needed. He knew that we needed to go through that. We needed to know not just in our head. Oh, yeah, I know God will supply all my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. Great. But this is what I need. No. God knew what our needs were and we needed to learn that. The Lord is the Lord of all. Number two, God's providence is both natural and supernatural. God provides both naturally and supernaturally. Did you notice that Elijah was provided for by, he was directed to a brook. Go to the brook Cherith. It's still got water in it. Okay, well, that's pretty natural. It's a brook. It's the water's flowing. And then when it, the drought was heavy enough, it dried up. So it wasn't supernaturally fed, but the meat and bread that he got, well, you know what? In my 56 years of life, I have never had a raven come bring me lunch. But Elijah got breakfast, lunch, dinner, and probably a midnight snack. God provided both naturally and supernaturally. Even when he was staying in the widow's, widow's home, he stayed in someone else's home who took care of him. That's very natural. But God provided supernaturally in that the flour was never exhausted, the jar of oil. There was always oil in there. They didn't have to go out and buy it. They just open it up and look in it. Reminded of the old story about uh, the person who was in a serious flood to the point where they had to get up on their house. You remember this story? And, and the, uh, the rescue team came by in a boat 
This was a very strong believer and he was calling on the Lord and believing the Lord was going to rescue him. And the rescue boat came by and they're saying, come on, get in. He goes, no, 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 no. The Lord's going to rescue me. I'm, I'm all right. Go on ahead. Go rescue somebody else. So the boat went by. Then pretty soon he had to get up and he's sitting on top of the chimney by this time. And a helicopter comes by and they say, please hold on to the bar. He says, no, 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 no. The Lord's going to rescue me. So the helicopter went by and pretty soon the floodwaters came up and he died and he went to heaven. And he went before the Lord. He said, Lord, where were you? I was calling out to you. He says, where were you? What were you thinking? I sent you a boat. I sent you a helicopter. We, we think that God only, sub, only supplies us by the miraculous. It's got to be miraculous in order for it to be God's provision. Uh-uh. I've told you before when I was in Bible college, I knew so many kids who would get that unexpected check in the mail. Wow, it's just what I needed. I never got one of those checks. But you know what God provided me? He provided me a skill in knowing how to do certain construction activities. And I was never unemployed. I always had more than enough work that I needed. That's how God provided for me. That was God's providence. That was God's providence. God provides naturally. He provides supernaturally. It's the nature of our God. Number three, God's providence is always in God's perfect timing. God's provision is always in God's perfect timing. Critical to understand that one is God's timing is not necessarily our timing, your timing. Israel's spiritual condition was desperate. God sent Elijah. Why did he wait until Ahab? Why didn't he send Elijah earlier? They could have gotten their act together. I don't know. But it was God's perfect timing. When it got to a certain point, God said, now I need to send Elijah. The scripture tells us in Galatians 4.4 4, that when man's spiritual condition was desperate, when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law. God's perfect timing is not necessarily our timing. And we live in this relationship with God on a need-to-know basis. And there are a lot of things that we don't need to know. We don't need to know why Elijah came during Ahab's reign instead of Omni's reign. We don't need to know that. But we can know, number one, the Lord is Lord of all. So it wasn't like he forgot. Elijah got there late. Sorry, I was supposed to be here for the last king, but at least I'm here now. No. And when you're looking for God's providence and you're saying, Lord, I'll look. I know you are Lord of all. I know you can supply naturally or supernaturally. I know you're in total control, but I don't see where it's coming from yet. That does not mean that God has forgotten. It means that it isn't time yet. That either for you or for someone else, God's glory will be best revealed by waiting a little bit longer. You see, we often look at it very uh, self-centeredly and say, okay, well, isn't the time yet, so God's trying to build something in me. Well, of course, God's always trying to build something in you. But you know, sometimes God uses us to build something in somebody else. 